Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Six Shadows and I'm back at it again with another build video. Haven't done one of these in quite a while, but Ark is releasing in just over a week, so I figured I may as well do a build focusing on early game, as well as give you guys a few tips to help you survive on the new servers, because I'm guessing they're going to have max population, 70 out of 70, so it's going to be pretty harsh. So yeah, this is kind of what it looks like. It's just a stone 3x3 surrounded by plants with a few sloped roofs for extra hidden storage at the top. As always, I'm going to start off with the base tour, then I'll show you guys how to build it, and then we'll go into some tips on how to survive. So yeah, let's get to it. First room is just an airlock. It's got a couple of dump chests in here. So if you're out PvPing, you manage to kill someone, quickly run back, stash it in your airlock, and then head back out again for some more action. Nothing innovative there, just a, just a classic airlock with some dump chests. Next up, you've got preserving bins with a whole bunch more storage. For those of you guys that don't know, mortar and pestles can just act as more storage space. They have three less slots than a storage box. Storage box has 15, mortar and pestle has 12, and obviously the mortar and pestle takes up much less space. So that's why I've spanned them all around here. Preserving bin, large storage box. This one is optional. I'll explain why later after we get up to the top. Next room is crafting area and forges. So I got double smithies at the back, extra storage again, and then four forges. Now this might be overkill, especially if you're playing solo, you probably want to build a little smaller. But for me, I'm probably going to be playing with a couple friends, so I figured we're going to want four forges to speed things up a bit on the grind to metal tier. Next up is the middle, your safe room, the hardest room to get to in your base. You got your beds in here and some more mortar and pestles for storage as well as the window to access your fabricator. Now the fabricator is pretty easy to move stuff from the smithy to the fabricator, it's not too far, just like three or four steps. Uh, that's why I built it like that. More modern pestles for storage as I said. You also have a uh, trap door to go up to the top level. More storage again up here, which is probably even safer than downstairs. And then we got some windows. Underneath all the sloped roofs is one storage box. So I'd probably keep your most valuable loot up here. And this is on all three sides. It's missing on this side because of the large storage box downstairs. That's why I said it was optional. You can choose to remove that storage box. And then have four boxes in the roof like I do here. Or you can just have three and have the extra storage downstairs. Completely up to you. But yeah, I'd store all my valuables up here in the top. Reason being is that uh, in the early game, people are going to be raiding you with grenades. If they blow up your trap door with grenades, they're most likely going to blow up your ladder. Which means they need to grapple up to get the loot. And there's quite a lot of resources to use in the other game, so yeah. Store all your valuable shit upstairs or in this room here. And yeah, that's pretty much the base. Nothing too new or exciting, just the slope roof method of hiding loot, which I don't know if people have done before, I'm not sure. I actually raided a base like this myself, like in one of my videos, I forget which one it was. Somewhere in the snow, it actually looked more like this, which is what you can turn this base into after you upgrade to metal tier and use turrets. So this one has just a few changes, I'll go over them quickly. If I can get in the door, <laughs> there we go. So first thing I did was drop a vault on the fabricator. And the second thing I did was made the upstairs area into the generator and the cables instead of storage. That way if someone blows in, it's quite hard for them to get like take your generator off instantly. So you might even consider chucking up a few internals in here. But yeah, <laughs> we can focus on that another time if people want to. For now, we're focusing on the early game, the stone building over here. And yeah, let's let's get into it. I'll show you guys how to build it. All right, guys, let's jump straight into the build. The list of uh, building parts and resources you need will now be on the screen. Feel free to pause it if that's what you need. Otherwise, let's jump right into it. First thing we're going to do is lay majority of our foundations. It's going to be a three by three. Just don't place the two foundations in the bottom right. So you're going to want something like this. The reason for that is because we're going to lower these two so the fabricator doesn't stick through the roof. Lowering foundations, I'm sure most people know. Chuck a pillar inside one foundation. Snap a thatch foundation on the lower snap point. Demolish the pillar and then repeat. We're going to do it three times. Whoops. That pillar was too high. So thatch foundation on the lower snap point. Demolish again. And just lower it one more time. Pillar. Foundation. Perfect. That's what we're after. Go ahead and snap two more stone foundations on the low snap point. There you go. Grab out your fabricator, jump into K mode, 
Nothing too special about the placement. Obviously have it on the lowered foundations and make it so you can still place walls around it. Perfect. Next up, in case your fabricator in foundations, so snap two high ones. You can still access it like that. Perfect. Now we're going to wall the outside of the fabricator. Make sure the walls are on the high snap point. Put two ceilings on top. Alright, so you're going to want something like that. Jump on top of the ceilings. Grab out your two smithies. And place them from up here. Again, nothing special with the placement. Just as close to the fabricator wall as you can. And make it so you can still place walls on the outside of the base. You still should have a lot of space though. It's not too hard to place these. There we go. Now you can wall the outside pretty much to this corner over here. Grab out your refining forges. Just place them along the walls, close to the smithy as you can. It, they shouldn't be too hard to place. You should have leftover room, so don't worry if there's a slight gap between them. And one more. There we go. <laughs> Got the four forges. Next up, we're going to do the door frames. We want one on the right side of the fabricator. One here, the entrance to your safe room. And then one to the right of that. And then one at the entrance of the base. Chuck your doors on all of those. Okay, seal up the fabricator room completely. Wall your safe room. And then finish your walls around the outside of the base. And there you go. Should have something that looks like this. Okay, we're free to sealing off the uh, crafting room. In your safe room, you can put the hatch frame down. Go ahead and place the two more ceilings. Remember to leave this one blank if you want the large storage box. If you don't, feel free to sealing it off. So place the large storage box inside. Grab out your three window frames for the, the three storage boxes you're going to have under the ramps. Grab out your sloped uh, your sloped ceilings, whatever these are, the triangles. Slope stone wall left and right. And then place them on all sides of the base in the middle. There you go. It should look something like this now. Go ahead and snap the slope stone roofs in the middle of those things that you just placed. There we go. So that, that's what the outside should look like. Now we can work on placing the inside. Alright, first up was the airlock room. Chuck one more door frame down to actually make it into an airlock. And a door, obviously. So what I did for mine was I chucked the campfire in the corner, as close to the corner as I could get it. I put a small storage box on each side. Obviously you can design the interior however you want, this is just how I did it. There you go. You can still get out both doors and you've done it correctly. Next up, I did the preserving bins just here. There's nothing real special about the placement. <laughs> as long as you can still get by everything, then you should be fine. See, perfect. Grab out as many mortar and pestles as you want and just spam these things all around. It's just extra storage. Some people find them annoying though to have to like loot them all to find where you put something. Don't forget to place your beds down in the, the uh, center safe room area. And then chuck some more mortar and pestles in here if that's what you want. Climb back up to the top part. Snap in your windows. Then just open them up. Chuck a box inside each one. Either three or four depending on how you decided to have it. And yeah, there you go. You pretty much finished the base. Well, there was nothing too hard about it. Pretty easy build compared to some of the ones I do. No vault dropping or anything like that. And there you go, you got a nice secure starter base, not a giant open box like most people have. Alright, next up I'm just going to put the plants down. I'll just go over my tips while I place them down, just so I have something to talk about while I'm placing them. So, my, I'm just going to place them all around the bottom and then on top, as you saw before, like on the slopes as well as on the flat parts. So yeah, I'll just get to that. The first tip I have for you guys is stay away from the beach. Like, so many times you'll, like, you just walk down the beach and you'll see a whole heap of, like, thatch or wooden buildings. Sometimes even stone buildings. Sometimes people even build their main bases on beaches. And, like, on the new servers, most areas are going to have a lot of traffic. But the beaches will have by far the most traffic out of all of them. So you're going to want to walk in, even if you just walk in a little bit and just get a bit of cover from the trees. 
Like, it'll be a whole lot better than building on the beach. Like, I guarantee you'll get rated less living in the forest than you will on the beach. My second tip to you guys is try not to build out of thatch or wood. Like, to get wooden structures, you only need to be level 11. So, even if you're not hardcore, like you're super casual, you should be able to get a wooden base up at the start of the game. If for some reason you can't get a wooden base up, I suggest just dropping a storage box inside a bush or maybe under the water. You'd have a higher chance of not getting raided than if you build a thatch structure. Like, anyone can raid thatch, you just hit it with a stone tool and it'll go down. Same with wood. So if you can, my second tip to you guys is try and make the grind for stone structures. It may be long, but it really shouldn't be. Like, you just pick up Explorer Notes and you'll be there in no time. Go on the wiki and get a map of Explorer Notes to help you level. And yeah, build your base out of stone, like ASAP, as soon as you can. My third tip relates to what we're doing right now, and that is get your defenses up early. Defenses are going to be the most important thing in the game at the start of the new servers. So you're going to want to get those compost bins going, get the Plan X turrets down as soon as you can. And while they're growing, either stay online, which might be hard because Plan X take a long time to grow, or kind of guard them with aggressive dinos. So tame an aggressive raptor, and maybe like a Fiomi or something. You're going to want to put the raptor on aggressive, ride the Fiomia and whistle the raptor so the raptor's following it and kind of tethered to the Fiomia. And that way it'll go out and attack someone that comes, but then when they get out of range it'll run back to the Fiomia. And then yeah, you kind of have like a tethered defense. So yeah, you kind of have some kind of defense while your plants are still growing. Because I'm guessing there's going to be a lot of trolls uh, trying to take your fertilizer at the start of the game. So that's what an, an aggressive dino or two will definitely help with that. But yeah, defense is the key, guys. You shouldn't be spending your time doing anything other than pretty much defending your base at the start of the game. And that pretty much leads into my final tip that I have for you guys, and that is don't over-tame. Too many times you'll see someone with like a stone 2x2 two two house, and they'll have so many tames. Like they'll have a low-level Theri, they'll have a Dire Bear, they'll have like a, maybe a Kano, a Saber, all that stuff. It's just not necessary. You don't have the defenses to protect them in that stage of the game. So you don't want to go for any long, time-consuming tames. You just want to tame what's necessary to help you build up defenses. And then after you can defend the tames, then you can go ahead and tame those Theries and Rexes and all that stuff that you want, but you don't need. So yeah, that, that's my final tip, guys. Don't over-tame. Only tame what's necessary. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the tips, guys. I'm just going to fly over to somewhere I've built this in a hidden location. Just to show you guys how well it blends in. And also to tell you guys about the location because it is my one of my favorite early game spots. So let's cut over there now. All right, here we are, guys. So I built a prototype here, hidden away in the trees. You might remember this location. This is where I was building at the start of the series, back when I was solo and trying to stay hidden. There's so many trees around here, and it's super close to metal. Like, let me just show you guys. So the base is right here. I'll just fly up a bit, show you guys. Like, the, the top of the trees hides it very well. Can't be seen. And from the ground, like, there's just too many trees. No one's going to be really walking through here compared to if you build on a beach. So highly recommend you find yourself a nice secluded spot in the trees to build. All right, this specific spot, I'm going to show you guys where it's located because I know someone might be interested. So there you go. It's located at 71.9 and 46.1. Right there in the south on the map, you can see. Pause it if you need to take note. Now I'm just going to show you guys how close it is to resources and why I recommend this spot. Alright, the base is right here. I've sped myself up a bit. The metal is just up this cliff here. It's probably the easiest metal mountain in the game in terms of like aggressive dinos that are up here. You may run into some raptors or some trudons, but that's about it. You won't run into rexes or anything like that. So <laughs> just right up here is heaps of metal nodes. This is the spot I was using when I first started out. There's some down this way, and then majority of it is at the top of the mountain. There you go. Whole bunch of rich metal nodes up here. So it's a really good starter spot. Another reason why I chose it is because a beaver dam spawns. So from the top of the mountain, you just want to look towards the red obelisk and just go that way. Red obelisk to my left. Alright, I can't really find that many beaver dams, but there is there is a couple here. So there's, there's one there, and there's one there. This is where the beavers do spawn if you do intend to use this area. They kind of spawn around this island. They can be to the left, like in that little swamp area, or they can be on the right in that swamp area, or also in the water here. There is quite a few beaver spawns. That's how I was able to build up so quickly at the start of the game. 
So yeah, really good area to start out if you're a new player to the game or you're solo or whatever. Plenty of places to stay hidden and it's real close to resources. So that's the end of the video guys. For you more advanced players, the tips will probably be uh, more common knowledge than helpful. But when ARK releases, I'm hoping we'll get an influx of new players, keep the game alive. And I'm hoping these tips can help them out, the build or the tips or both, like anything to help them survive and keep playing the game. So yeah, that's the end of the video guys. Thanks for watching and as always, I'll see you in the next video.